Hello everybody. So today I want to talk about HIMS. HIMS as a vertically integrated player in the ELF space. So as you know, HIMS is a company that provides both consultations with digital providers, typically doctors located anywhere in the US. And as you go for a consultation, HIMS will prescribe you a drug that you may need for any specific condition. It's a very cohesive process that is essentially vertically integrated as far as I'm, uh, as I'm um, interested here. But the industry that it's competing against, right? Healthcare itself to me is very disintermediated. If you think about it, Healthcare, when we talk about the, the world of healthcare, we have multiple entities that coalesce together to become this thing that we call healthcare, right? So you have medical offices and hospitals, both providers and facilities, and they talk to each other and each of them wants a margin, right? Then you have insurance companies which allocate the phones, right? The phones are always paid by the patient in the form of an insurance premium, and then it's the insurance companies who decide where the phones go, whether you have to take a generic or regular drug, whether you can see a specialist or whether uh, you can't. Uh, that dictates, you know, insurance companies dictates the, the hospital systems you go the doctor you pick they dictate just about everything and then at, at the lower uh, end of this value chain we have pharmacy networks they are distributors of medications right they are different again from the hospitals and from the doctors and we have pharmaceutical companies who sells and make and develop those medications and sell them to pharmacy networks and of course each of these different parties is out there to get their margin right each party is a separate entity with separate goals for profit they all strive for profit leaving little room for agility moving fast innovating like like hims is doing and especially leaving little room for what i call best cost innovation where you are both the best product and the cheapest product right it's very hard for legacy healthcare to become the cheapest because each party wants their margin right each enterprise in the value chain wants a margin from interacting with the other enterprise and so this is highly uh, problematic this is a structural issue that legacy healthcare has that a company that's vertically integrated like hims does not have but the advantages um go even further for hims and so first of all let's go for a little uh, of history why why do we have s such a disintermediated system uh, well that's because Unlike today, unlike the digital world, back then you needed local managers, right? You, you, you couldn't have a Zoom call with people across the country. You couldn't send emails. When the whole healthcare system was set up, you needed, you needed everything to be local. You needed local pharmacies, local doctors, local managers, and, and this was needed in order to be reactive. You could not be reactive if you had everything managed in a centralized location and not spread across the country. So that's a lot of history. And then we also have inertia, right? Right, right, we've kept it this way because it's always been done this way. So there's never been a first principle questioning as to is it the way, is the way that we're doing it, is it the right way to do it? Nobody has ever questioned that, right? And so we, we are we are moving, evolving with this system, which was just created out of inertia. That was before the di digital world. Before the digital world also, growth like we know today, like, like you know, uh, um, an, an enterprise like, like OpenAI's chat GPT, go going to, from zero to 100 million customers in, in just a few months, that was not possible. That was not feasible because growth was constrained by capital because you were operating in the world of brick and mortar. You were constrained by capital. And in order to obtain this capital, you had no choice but to have multiple owners to pull the capital together. The growth of the company could not produce enough cash flow to finance new facilities and new expansion. And in a, in a summary, and to summarize this, the, the whole idea as to why today we can have vertically integrated companies that own everything, while that wasn't a thing back, you know, even 30 years ago, pre, pre-internet, is this. In the world of bits, I, in the world of ones and, and, and zeros, right, in the world of uh, data moving through optic fiber for, for, for with ones and zeros, in this world of bits, growth is virtually unconstrained unlimited 
right? All you do is run up your bill with Amazon Web Services, right? That's how, for example, Zoom, Zoom in 2020 grew 20 times. It grew 20 times in a matter of a week. In a matter of a week, Zoom grew 20 times in 2020. That's not possible in the brick and mortar space, right? You can't multiply the capacity of a Walmart pharmacy by 20 in a week. But you can do that in the world of bits, right? And in the world of atoms, you can't do that because it's bricks and mortars, because growth is constrained by capital. And so the question is, you know, how many decades do you need, for example, to be CVS and build a network of pharmacies across the US? How many decades? Probably three decades, right? Maybe even more than three decades. How many decades do you need to build a thousand medical offices? Probably a few decades too. HIMSS does not have that problem because it's all dematerialized, it's all digital, it's all operating in the world of ones and zeros, in the world of bits. And with the world of bits, because you get that growth so fast, that unconstrained growth so fast, what you get is that you have scaled demand right away. You have very, very, very high demand right away because your company, your product can grow really fast and thus you are confident to make a very strong investment in your warehouses. And if you follow him, so you know that they are doing that with your Phoenix and their Columbus warehouse, you can build a much bigger warehouse to move your atoms. And if there's one thing we know about the world of atoms, this is an example of the, the largest building in the world, the, the Giga factory of Tesla in, in Austin. Um, you can see that whenever you change the size of a physical object by just just a bit not much that growth is not linear that growth is 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 exponential the relationship between size of an object and output of that object is not a linear relationship in the world of physical things it is it is a, a exponential relationship that's why if you look at the world of TVs for example if you ever look into looking at TV there's going to be a world of a difference between an 80 inch TV and an 83 inch TV even though it's just three inches, right? Because it grows exponentially and that extra inch is so much. The same is true for a factory. The same is true for um, televisions, for a house. That's why we have so many bigger houses, for example, and they're cheaper. The same is true for wind turbines, for any sort of facility. In, in the world of atoms, w the bigger you build, the more you can achieve. And, and these are all forces that go in the favor of HIMSS and that help HIMSS out. And that's why I think the vertical integration of HIMSS could create more benefits than more people think. Buying essentially two companies right now, the digital doctor and the digital pharmacy when you buy HIMSS, and perhaps in the future three companies when they have more compounded pharmacy products and more of their proprietary drugs, three companies in one, that allows you that vertical integration, that allows you to capture so much more. And let me go back then to the little example that I have, um, which is why we look at newer companies. Newer companies like HIMSS have the potential to own much of their value chain, if not the entire value chain, right? That's the case of a company like Tesla or Apple, for example. They both own a, a, a disproportionate size of their value chain. So we can ask the same question about HIMS. How well is HIMS doing with vertical integration? Can they end up owning their entire value chain? Well, going back to what I started the video with, you can see that legacy healthcare as a network of doctors, that's player one, real estate, that's player two, insurance, that's player three, pharmacies that distribute the drugs, that's player four, and pharma companies that make the drugs at player five. While in the case of HIMSS, we have one app for all of the digital connections provided by HIMSS. We don't have local real estate, but it's eliminated by HIMSS. We have a customer that pays directly outside of insurance. So you're removing a party and a, a, the margin of a party. You have HIMSS that distributes the drug. So you're removing the pharmacy network. And you have HIMSS that just started compounding drugs with, for example, uh, their product hair blends or their product hard mints. And so what that tells you is that while in the, the um, legacy system, in the, in the old healthcare world, you have disintermediated players that trade with each other and that each need a margin, an economic margin. The value created, you got to split it. You have to split it five ways or more because, of course, the pharmacos also have suppliers and the physical network of doctors may go for different parties to acquire customers. If you look at the case of HIMSS, most of that value is created 
by hims itself and there's some sharing for example you still have to share with digital providers right so hims handles the connection right but you have to digital providers that need to get paid a nominal fee and you still have to share whenever you use a name brand drug and if you use generic compounds you have a supplier if you use a lot of marketing to acquire new customers you have a, a, a distributor per se so there's, there's still many players in the hims value chain that is you know, not produced by them that they have to share but but the number of players in the hims value chain is much smaller than the number of players in the value chain of traditional healthcare which is why much of that margin much of that value creation can be captured by hims and can be also given back to the customer so that the customer flocks to the product loves the product loves the company and and, and gives that word of mouth gets that word of mouth starting gives a high net promoter score it's essentially a win-win right when you save costs it is a win-win it's a win for the company and it's a win for a customer the only um, uh, player that loses is the is the player that is not disrupting itself and that is getting disrupted and that's why the more i think about the hims the more i think that this company could be much bigger uh, than I initially thought when I started studying it. And and, and the more you study uh, books like like Zero to One, books like Blue Ocean Strategy, if you study all of these books of, of, of innovation and how businesses innovate, um, I think it's very easy to, to fit a clear picture into him's future. I own the stock, very happy to own the stock and looking forward to owning more of that stock. So anyways, this was not investment advice. This is just entertainment. I hope you were entertained. Appreciate your likes and your subscribes. Have a wonderful day.